Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Andrew. We are happy you have joined us as we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I am Anne Albertus, and I will be serving as the lector for this Mass. Our music will be led by Jim Balistrieri and Reflections of Grace. The presider for the liturgy is Monsignor Mike, assisted by Deacon Mark. As a reminder, reception of communion in the hand is strongly recommended. Those receiving on the tongue are asked to wait to be at the end of the line. To minimize distractions during Mass, we ask you to silence all cell phones and personal devices. I invite you now to stand and safely greet your neighbor.
Good afternoon, Father. We gather on this Sunday to offer our worship and praise to God in a special way. We continue to pray for all those who've been impacted so severely because of the storms this past week. We just gained power back here on the parish campus late last night, um, uh, around 10 o'clock, I think it was, 9.30, 10 o'clock. So uh, we're blessed at least, but I know there's still many of our parishioners who have no power still. And so we pray for them. We also pray in a special way for the people in Haiti who not only got clobbered with a tropical storm, but of course the big earthquake, 7.2 on the Richter scale. And now they're mourning the deaths of over 300 and continuing to look for survivors. So in our heart and in our prayers, let's remember them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate the sacred mysteries that have been entrusted to us, let's first call to mind our sins, asking for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness in our lives. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God, Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh in the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Son, body and soul into heavenly glory. Grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a child, a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an honored iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert, where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, 
Then, at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. If you're like me, you've probably at one time or another during your lifetime have tried to imagine what Mary's assumption looked like. Think about that for a minute. After all, our belief that the Blessed Mother, after her earthly life had ended, was taken up into heaven, body and soul, makes for quite an interesting image, doesn't it? 
I mean, we've seen all sorts of little imagery, paintings, holy cards, things along those lines. I know as a child, I actually imagined her as sort of flying away, like Sister Betrayal on the Flying Nun, Sally Field, if you remember those days. Or I thought she might have been on some kind of magic wires or something like that, being pulled up into heaven on a giant tether. Kind of crazy, but I mean, what can you imagine for a little guy of six or seven or eight years old? Even in art that we see depicted over the ages, her assumption is often depicted as Mary rising into the heavens in the presence of many onlookers. I guess there really is no other good way to present a mystery so visually for us to understand it. There wasn't any pictures being taken at that time. Yet quite honestly, <clears throat> there's really absolutely no way for us to know. Nor do I think, as I thought about it this week, is it important for us to know exactly what the scene must have looked like. One thing is almost certainly true, though. The images that we form in our minds are probably not even close to what really happened that day. It's probably easier for us to sum up the assumption then in just a few words. For much of my life, I thought of it as when Mary's time on this earth had ended, she immediately was with God in a complete, total, and very full way. For me, that was always kind of a simple way of saying something quite profound, something that can really be complicated when we exclu exclusively try to use theological language to explain it. They'll talk about Mary's dormition and her falling asleep and then how she was taken up into heaven. The fact is, when her earthly life ended, Mary was finally and completely with God on high. Yet, I don't think that tells the whole truth. It doesn't present the whole picture either for us this day. You see, one of the reasons that why we as people of faith believe that the Virgin Mary was assumed body and soul into heaven, that is, was immediately and fully, fully with God at the end of her earthly life, is because she had been continually with him and he with her her whole life anyways. So it wasn't anything unusual. They had always been together. Our celebration today, this Feast of the Assumption, doesn't tell us that Mary was suddenly with God, kind of like she was beamed up into heaven, as if she hadn't been with God before. No, Mary just didn't have to wait to be fully with God because in a very real sense, she had never left his side her whole life long. And from that very, very moment of her conception until the day she was called home to heaven, she was always with the Lord. So it's perfectly fitting then, my brothers and sisters, that she, the one who had day in and day out, remained faithful, the one who had said yes to that most awesome question posed of her, a request like any other, the one who cooperated with God and changed our world, entered into participation in our salvation history story, she would con simply continue to be with God in a most perfect way from the moment her days on earth had ended. That, my brothers and sisters, should certainly give each and every one of us Hope that we too will someday be with God in a complete way too, body and soul, the whole of me and the whole of you. But it can also give us hope in what is possible in this life here on earth. Like Mary, we don't have to imagine a life with God being down the road somewhere. You know, we're going to finally encounter that after a while at some point in the future. Rather, think about this, rather, through faithfulness, you and I can begin to live with God within us and for us right now at this very moment, just as Mary did. God never leaves us. It's only us who turns God away. 
And though we might not take the perfectly straight path that Mary took during her entire life, be assured that the destination is the same for her as it is going to hopefully be for you and I, made possible by a God who loves us more than you and I can ever imagine, a God whose mercy knows no bounds, a God who died so that we might live, live more fully with each other and with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit for all eternity. O oh Mary, Queen of all heaven, pray for us. Amen. You need to say a little prayer and thanksgiving to Mary for giving you a short homily today because, uh, you know, the electricity, the power, the computers, everything was down to late last night. So uh, you owe her one. So <laughs> we stand together now and offer our common belief. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. My friends, let us now turn to the Father with these prayers for our church and for the needs of our world today. For the church, that we may recognize our bodies as temples of the living God and be open to the continuing marvels that God does in our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders in government, that they will use their power and influence to address the needs of the voiceless and powerless in society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family of parishes, St. Andrew, St. Irenaeus, and St. Mary of the Hills, may we, through the intercession of Mary, our mother, continue to grow in faith, hope, and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, may God protect them and grant them full health of mind, body, and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Father James Wigging, Deacon C. Roger O'Donnell, and Susan Malassi, may they know the joy of the resurrection as they see God's face in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intercessions placed in our prayer basket, and for Julia Houston, Richard Giuliani, and James David Arnold, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Father, your love for us is unfailing. Answer our prayers this day, those spoken and those held in the silence of our hearts. And we ask that you grant them according to your most holy will through the intercession of Mary and her son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy together we proclaim. gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed, with Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with St. Andrew, St. Irenaeus, St. Mary of the Hills, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. prayers and praise into one, we offer the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us share with one another the peace of Christ. Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements we have. Um, Next weekend is the annual collection for the church in Poland. If you would like to donate, there are envelopes at the entrance exits of the church, that's for sure. Again, continue to pray for all those people who are still struggling with the power outages. Um, uh, we were lucky that it came on last night. It would have been a little bit difficult. Uh, five o'clock mass made it through okay yesterday, but the projection of the voice and, and what have you, and then you're only limited to the piano, and and what have you. So um, be praying for those who are really, really struggling without air or what have you, that uh, especially in need of people of, at home in need of oxygen and things like that. So we keep them in our special prayers. And again, as I mentioned, the people in Haiti, of course, that they've been struggling so much. And in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll put an announcement coming up in the paper, probably just after the Labor Day holiday, we'll have another family of parishes gathering. I think it's going to be at St. Irenaeus, we decided this time. And of course, like it was an ice cream social, it's going to be, a, there'll be a special social at the end of the evening. And we'll have a little bit more table discussion to go on to. So please start looking at your calendar to plan that out. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you on your journeys, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord Jesus by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Mount 